today is all the reptiles. What's up guys? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today is packed with all types of reptiles. We're going to be getting up close and personal to where they live, what parts of the house they live in, and also where they're going. Now I know you guys have been seeing mammals, different animals on the couch, but I have a special animal on the couch this time. I'm not dangerous. Liar. <laughs> Stay My name tuned. is Laura. Laurita is going to be showing you guys all her personal favorites and her relationships with all the animals that she likes the most. Now, we also have a 200 pound reptile. We'll show you guys at the end. And we have a reptile no one's ever seen before that you guys are going to see for the first time today. Let's go. Guys, welcome to my MTV Crips episode. Come on in. All right, guys, so first up is our living room. We have giant snakes in a huge habitat. We got Australian monitors that are black and white. And then we have an Indonesian crocodile monitor. And then we have an Australian frilled dragon with a crazy frill from like Jurassic Park. Guys, before we start, I wanna give a special shout out to our sponsor, Custom Cages, AKA Vision Cages, has sent us crazy habitats the temporary enclosures for our animals for inside. We'll show you guys where they're gonna all go later on down the road, but check this out. This is my favorite habitat I have here so far. I mean, I got three foggers running on this bad boy right now, so it's fully smoked out. I got six different heat sources inside of there and a heat pad, so technically seven. Um, you can't see it because it's all fogged out, but let, let, let's, let's give it a check. So I have reticulated pythons here in California. They are my absolute favorite big snakes to work with. All the big constrictors are banned in Florida, so I couldn't really work with them. I'm gonna pull them out one by one so you guys can see them up close and personal. But that's a job for Loretta. Come on, Lo. So right here is our male pied retic, and this guy is great, man. He's doing all of our shows. He's bone white. He's got a couple of nicks on him right here, but that's just, you know, from his little dirt over there. But I mean, flawless snake. Belly looks good. Just awesome animal, man. When this thing's like 15, 16, 20 feet, nice and thick, bro, bone white, it's like, you got a snow snake, you know? This is sick. Another one of our flawless retics. Oh, this girl is, strong man um, she actually just like sucks on to you also another great eater uh, if you guys check out this underbelly it's just a flawless animal look at this girl's face just absolutely perfect Beautiful. you guys saw her in our last video when we had our uh, our tour op operation black site she was one of our big special guests she's puppy dog tame she's just awesome animal man Now you guys are probably wondering, why does this guy have all these snakes in this habitat? Again, these are temporary habitats. I had all these snakes separated, but once I got these foggers and had the right ratio of males to females, and also they have their own space to bask and hang out, once I get it, they can do pretty good. They'll be fine. I keep telling you which animal's flawless. This guy had a little bit of a nick next to his eye, like two sheds ago. If you guys can see it right there, it's kind of going away. You can see the rest of its head's nice and smooth, but that little small piece right look there. Look at that, look Yeah, so sick, right? So yeah, the, the cool thing about these anthrax, these golden childs, they have that crazy iridescence. It's like that rainbow sheen, you know? So this guy is easily probably like 11 foot, 12 foot, maybe like 60 pounds, 55. That's our boy. 
So next, our guy right here has been curled up the whole time. He's really sweet, he's chilling, he's gonna go through a shed, so he doesn't really wanna be bothered that much. But if you guys look, he's like, get up off me. Move, move, you know, he's using those muscle jolts. That's a sign to say, hey, I see what's happening. He's actually a really sweet snake, doesn't bite at all. But there's some snakes that'll do that jolt, do another jolt, and if you keep going, they'll just, they'll just tag you and let you know, like, hey, back up. So yeah, guys, we're gonna let that guy go, and leave him alone. But we have our biggest snake that also shares his habitat with these guys. She's easily two to three times bigger than everybody in here. End of the video, you guys will see that. All right, guys, so our new animal is one of the first color variables I've ever worked with, the Baranus variable. The Super Bell's Phase Lace Monitor from Australia. Full on grown adult male, full claws. I mean, this guy is sharp. And he is one of the fastest monitors I've ever worked with in my life. Thank you, Poopy. Really good. That's Poopy really good. <laughs> really good. Big Poop. Hi, baby. It's okay. <laughs> Let's check him out. Hold up. Freaky Loom. Um, this guy has a very, very, very quick feeding response. But if I can hit him with enough food and make him feel calm and comfortable, maybe we can get hands on. But I'm not promising nothing. I'm just going to try my best not to get bit. Come on, baby. I need some rats. And uh, I'm telling you guys, once this guy sees it, he is going to jet. Okay? So I gotta get a good grip on it. Hey. Woo! Walk him up. Come on. Fast. Guys, fast. Uh, I hand feed a lot of my animals. He is one of them I do not. And that rat is gone. I have another for him. Hey, 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 hey. Up here, up, oh, up, come on. Is that, uh... <laughs> now, it's not ideal to feed uh, juicy, wet rats on your uh, cloth couch, but... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for watch TV shows. Drip Eliante pulling up, feeling like Harry Belafonte. I haven't seen many adult lace monitors this size. This guy's easily about five foot. And if you look at that tail down there, it's almost pink. Uh, his name is actually Claude. He's, uh, he's doing his typical monitoring right now. He's, he's licking, he's smelling, he's seeing what's going on. <laughs> this guy is so gangster. <sighs> I love him. All right, guys, so we're gonna leave Australia and we're gonna fly back to Indonesia. Right, we're gonna handle the animal that's twice as dangerous as that lace monitor five times more friendly. Let's check them out. This guy is my absolute pride and joy I have here as far as lizards go. Um, of course, another temporary habitat. So we're gonna pick him up and show you guys Mr. Uh, Arthur. This is our nine foot crocodile monitor. Mr. Arthurito, AKA Ooh, Chains. Arthur. Absolutely love this guy. That and was a baby. He is our baby. We absolutely love him. Um, this guy has a chainsaw of a mouth and uh, one animal you do not want to get bit by. These guys are almost completely arboreal. Um, the scientific name of these guys is Varanus salvadori. And uh, those guys are Varanus, I think, variable. His tail is freakishly long, almost like a snake. Look, it's touching the ground and it's right at my forehead. Second longest lizard on the planet. You want to hold him? Strong. There you go. I just absolutely love him, man. When I got him, he gave me so much love and affection. Th this type of species is so feared in the reptile industry because they have razor sharp teeth, you know? And, uh, and he's heavy too. And he's heavy. <laughs> so we can actually switch up. It's all right. I'll take him here. Hi, right, pal. Yeah, he's heavy. That's okay. So you're really, really heavy. I want to put him back up in here. We have one more little guy in the living room to show you guys before we move on. Let's go. I'm gonna take you guys down a quick trip to memory lane. Remember the Dilophosaurus from freaking Jurassic Park? <laughs> we have something very similar to that, a frill dragon from Australia. And we're gonna try to give him the frill today so you guys can really see what it looks like. Here's our guy over here. He's not, uh, he's actually new to us, so we'll see how, uh, 
funky he wants to be. Nice little chunky fella. Uh, this is a male. Um, a couple cool facts about these guys. They run their back feet, so their back feet are much bigger than their front feet. Get that little amber underbelly down there. Now these guys are famous for having that full frill from Jurassic Park and running on their back feet. Now, when these guys feel threatened or they want to get away from an animal like a dingo or another lizard or see a snake, they'll frill up and make themselves look bigger. Now, I want to see if this guy can frill up. Usually if you hold like another snake or a lizard up to him, to open that up. Moment of truth. Look at this. You see this thing? Oh, there he goes. See those fangs in the front right there? That means he's a male. Females don't really have those big fangs like that. Guana's completely harmless. They don't even, they eat vegetables. They don't even eat meat. But this guy is from the land down under where they have tons of other lizards that will eat him for breakfast. So he's giving that full on, you know, fr <laughs> that flat is frilled dragon right there. So sick. Look at that. Full on fan. The iguana is just like, bro, I just do not care about you. <laughs> just absolutely chilling. And this guy's ready to freaking eat her to pieces. How sick was that? He got the frill up for us. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Let's go. We have more, so much more to see. All right, guys. So now we're going to go into my bedroom to the more sensitive snakes that I have in here. But these are also my most expensive snakes. I've ever bought in my entire life. So we have my freaking doggy over here, and of course, Laura teleported into the room. This is my boy, Shuggy. You guys know Shuggy. He's an OG on the channel. <laughs> Honey. I'm gonna slide this over. One of our guys is in a deep shed right now, so he's probably not gonna hang out with us. But our big girl, she is, uh, fully shed uh, and it's been a while since we debuted her on our channel so they're both up here perched um, right underneath the heat lamp that have two heat lamps inside there i have a fog machine it's actually cool inside there bolens pythons live high up in the mountains it's like a real misty like 72 to 76 type of temperature yeah man these guys are actually known to be out basking in like the 50s high 50s low 60s so we're gonna pull this girl out and uh, we're gonna see what's up to her. Looking at this girl inside does no justice, so we're gonna go outside and check her out. Let's go. And here she is, guys. Look at her. Sweet as pie, thicker than a snicker. And look at that crazy iridescent snap. Fresh shed. I mean, if you look at the head, it almost looks like velvet. Those thick head plates up there. They also call them Papuan Moran pythons. Now, in these guys' natural territory, they worship these snakes as their god. Just look at that. Look at this animal, man. Now, this is one of the bigger bowling pythons in the US right now. But when me and Laura were up at San Diego Zoo, how big was the one we saw? Super big, like. Three times the size of this. Am I lying? Four times the size of this one. Absolutely blown away how big the one we saw was, but our girl is just, I mean, look at the underbelly. I love, one of the things I love about this snake outside of the iridescence is look at that yellow that goes from the top, top lip all the way down the belly. And then as it keeps getting more and more, the speckles keeps coming and keeps coming and it comes coming, keeps coming. And then it just turns black. So sick dog. But then they get those yellow spots here and there. Then it turns to bands. And then when they're little, when they're babies, they're like almost like a velvet red color. Look at this animal, man. This one was born in 2019. She's a female. They're almost, I wouldn't say impossible to breed, but very, very, very few people have bred these in history. Not just in the United States, but in history. So yeah, man, you have your Bolin's Python, Somalia Bolini. That's Cleopatra. Her husband's name is Bane. All right, we're back. So I'm gonna show you guys my second baby in my room. We have Titan, the Malukan scrub python. This guy is an adult male. He is absolutely flawless. Why are you snoring? You're not even sleeping. He's like, I'm your baby dad, not that one. 
this guy is actually going through a shed. Now, along with the uh, the Bolus pythons, this guy is actually one of the also hardest species to breed in captivity. But this guy fathered 15 children last year. I'm working on getting the female that he got pregnant and also another animal that's the exanthic version of him. When this guy had all his eggs, half were regular Moluccans, other half were exanthic Moluccans, which is crazy. I'm gonna see if he wants to eat real quick. I don't think he's interested in this guy because he hits hard immediately. Our scrub is not interested in eating, but um, I may, I may get the Boltons to eat. She smells it. I don't recommend this at all, guys. This is very, very um, not a good idea to do, but you can grab this snake nice and slow. Get it to start eating like that. She's gonna eat that pig over there. <laughs> Guys, I tell you guys over and over and over again, don't do the stuff that you guys see me do. I'm a trained professional. I've been doing this my entire life. I know my snakes like the back of my hand. I obsess over them, but there she goes eating that pig. I have 50 plus snakes. That's the only snake I can do that with. I know every individual one of these snakes like the back of my hand. For example, now I have to rub this guy and let him know I'm not feeding him. So I have to take the back of the snake hook and I've got to rub his head and let him know, hey, there's no more rat, there's no more pig. It's just me over here. I let him know, hi buddy, I'm coming in. And then I can start to try to take him outside. Here we have our freaking Malukan scrub titan. The freaking male ambassador of his species we have here at the ranch look at this guy yo a freaking tank easily like probably nine ten foot long let us see how freaking big this guy is what the heck dude now think of a green tree python's teeth and striking accuracy with the body of a carpet python the thickness of it fully arboreal species these guys are high up in the canopy in the bush, eating whatever moves. Top predator on that little small island of Maluka. So sick. This is your Malukan scrub python, Titan. Last but not least, check out the freaking head on this animal. Look how thick it is. So big. Look at the top up there. That's not fat deposits, that's straight up muscle. I don't want to piss them off, but oh my God. Come here. Come closer. Look at that. Look at those teeth right there. Oh my God. <laughs> Crazy. <clears throat> All right. We're going to put him back. We got to keep going. All right, guys. We're in our last room of our house inside. This room is packed and stacked from iguanas to serpent dragons, two different species of anaconda, colubrids and all the snakes that bite live in that room. Let's go check them out. First up, we're gonna start with our critically endangered Iguana Delicatissima. Now, these guys have a very, very good personality. These guys love their little showers. You guys know- He's like, oh. He says, oh yeah, thanks for my bath, man. <laughs> Now I keep these habitats nice and, especially this guy, these guys have uh, two extra hot heat lamps, but they have a fogger going on over there and they constantly get sprayed down about twice a day. So uh, if you guys see these guys, I feed them Missouri, feed them uh, collard greens, bananas. But if you look on this glass right here, they're always puffing up out of their nose, the salt. So whatever salt's inside their food or wherever else, just in their water, their nostrils, they're always living close by the beach. They live on a small island. So they're constantly puffing that, that snot out their nose. You know, their salt glands are just <laughs> kind of always sneezing in a sense. You know, that's why it's on that glass over there. I clean it every single day and it's always back every single day. So that's our big male. Our female is over here. She is uh, sleeping. She's sleeping in her food bowl. <laughs> Check her out. It's probably best to pull out our alpha. And they're like, look at that guy. 
Lesser Antilles, freaking white head. When he's in breeding season, the head turns almost like pinkish. And he will slap me right in the face if I get too uh, comfortable and too close with him. But look at that animal. These guys bred four years in a row now. Just a, just a gem to work with, man. Look at that guy. Full tail, all his claws. I trimmed his nails a few weeks ago. If you guys want to take a look underneath, hold them up fully tight like that. But males have these big, profound spurs on their thighs down there. And of course, they got those two big, giant bulge on their tail. It's their hemipenes. Let him go. Phil, let him go, hon. If you guys look at the, look underneath on our thighs. Perfect example. Males have those big, thick pores down there almost. Of course, yeah. they got that big, huge dewlap down there. Woo. He's uh, real jumpy, but. Woo! <laughs> Sleep. If you guys do know, um, I absolutely love iguanas. But look at that! How could you not love that face? Look at you guys, arms crossed. He's like a little freaking college professor. <laughs> yeah, he looks super chunky. Look at those big, thick scales on top of his head. I mean, a prehistoric animal, to say the least. Absolute gem to work with. Oh yeah. That's the spot. Moving forward, we are going to go to another animal. Um, these are our Philippine sailfin dragons. Now the male is real flighty. Um, he's got a little bit of a nose rub over there, but our female in here, she has no nose rub. She's really shy. Let's see if she wants to come hang out with us. I don't think she is. She's like, nope, I'm stuck in here and I'm staying. She's sweet, so we'll leave her in there. Um, like this guy, this guy got a little bit of a nose rub. Uh, I'll show you guys what our, our big male looks like. Oh, he's gonna jet. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah, now she's out, look, there she goes. I'm gonna let just let them go. Boom, that's their number one defense right there. Um, these guys actually live by waterfalls. So when they feel a sea of predator, when they feel threatened, they just jump out, dash right in the water. It's real misty where they come from because of course that waterfall's coming down. All that little mist is running around. It's nice and humid over there. But that's a way of escaping. So I'm gonna see if I can grab this female so you guys can. Ah! Now these are imports, but I mean, man. Oh, look you... at that animal! <laughs> ah! ah! All right, all right. I mean, guys, your claws are so sharp. Oh. I actually don't, I'm actually don't even wanna hold them. I don't wanna stress them out anymore. They're still settling in. Um, I have some more of those custom cages coming in and I'm actually gonna build him a waterfall and a huge glass um, deep diving area. So that big sail fin you guys see in the back of that tail, what do you think it's for? Swimming, go on. This female's over here. She may be a little more calm. I'm gonna give her one more try for you guys. After that, I quit. Um, unlike the vegetarians down here, these guys are uh, on the horse right into my hand. Oh! All right, all right, all right, all right. Ah! God! All right, okay. Oh, good God almighty. All right, oh, ah! Shoot, man, they'll tell you those claws. All right, all right, all right. All right, usually I get them to calm down, but look at that selfie. <sighs> so sick. Ah, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Because uh, it hurts. All right, I'm gonna put her, put her away. She's already freaked out enough. That's our silver dragons. That's our iguana delicatissima. Now let's keep rolling this train. So next, you want to go down below first? Okay. So you can pull out our boy down there. This is what. Tell him. You give us the the rundown of this animal. Uh, in Spanish? No. <laughs> in English. Um. Look like cobra, but no, it's venom, and no, it's dangerous, and it's so sweet, and it's my favorite. Where's he from? Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to help. Yeah, okay. I have, I have a funny thought. Oh my god, <laughs> my English is bad. No, it's good. Hi. Uh, now everybody laughing about me. Everybody's laughing about me. Uh. <laughs> This guy is the Eastern Indigo Snake. Uh, of course, you guys know these guys are uh, the longest snakes in the United States of America. They chow down on rattlesnakes. 
Um, they're immune to uh, rattlesnake venom and also venom in particular. They eat all types of snakes. All right, guys, so here we have our red-throated eastern indigo snake. He is uh, deep in shed. Um, I've actually, and I keep telling you guys the updates on each animal, how they are, what's going on with them. So this guy was flawless up until last week. I realized that he started eating his own tail. So he has a little bit of scarring. I got some medication from my vet. I put it on there so hopefully it goes away the next shed. It's already looking a whole lot better, but it freaked me out because again, he was a flawless snake. He's been eating fine, no problems. He's been shedding nonstop. He shed actually six times since November. So we're only in February. So you can think he's shedding twice a month. Um, so yeah, man, uh, apparently he was obese before I got him and they slimmed him down a little bit, but I've been up in his feeding some more as well too. So I'm not sure if he's like hungry. I called one of my, uh, my OG Ryan. I was like, Hey man, have you ever seen this before? Cause I know he had an indigo that went through the same problem. He ended up having an amputated tip of his tail. And then after he amputated it, it, it stopped. And then a year later, he started eating the freaking nub. So I kind of want to really prevent that from happening. So he may have to go back on the obese side if he uh, starts to try to eat himself. <laughs> so I'd rather him eat more rats than, you know, try to eat himself. But these guys are just absolute, a blessing to be working with in captivity. Another animal I could not work with in Florida um, because they're protected in Florida, but on the, on the West Coast, on California, you can have Eastern Indigos as pets. So uh, it's a, again, it's a pleasure to work with this guy. Um, they look just like cobras. Um, eventually, probably in the summertime, when uh, I start doing some snake removal locally in California, I might find a, a snake that's already dead or some fresh roadkill. I'll bring it home so he can eat it and see how it goes. I'm like, eat all the snake bites. Absolutely love this guy, man. Just love him. Oh, <laughs> You want to kiss him too? So yeah, we're gonna put him back. We're actually gonna spray his habitat down. And uh, the moment this guy finishes shedding, I'm gonna pound him with food. All right, next up. I now, don't wanna be around. You? No, <laughs> I don't wanna be vital. We won't beat about it. <laughs> I'm right. These next couple of snakes you guys are gonna see, besides this little girl up here, this one, this one, and those two are Especially not the nicest though. snakes I have. Um, some are new. This one, I can almost like kind of say I won't get big, but I just don't know. So we're going to figure it out. Um, I can be a lot more, uh, I could be a lot more uh, fine working with this one because uh, it's actually been pretty chill the last two times I've actually handled it. It's, act it's actively never tried to strike at me, which is, uh, which is a good thing, um, but you never know with these snakes because anacondas, they don't really strike. They just turn and bite, turn and hit you. And uh, that's when, yeah, that's what happens. So uh, we're going to let this guy know I don't have any food. Hey, right, buddy. This is my high yellow anaconda. I've been uh, deprived of working with in Florida for the, over the years. So when I first got here, these were some of the species I immediately sought out to get because I just genuinely missed them. Um, this guy is a high yellow, uh, yellow anaconda. So sick. Now, again, I may get bit, it's okay. It's never my, it's never the snake's fault for them biting you because they're always either nervous or not comfortable, or they just have that demeanor. So, but I kind of think with this guy now, it's just, he's just not gonna bite. He love you. I think so. So, yeah, man, like, I love the granite speckling in between the scales. If you look at the scales, that speckling in between, it's what, I like the little details in snakes, man. That's what gets me going. You get that little small pinhead. Uh, this guy's actually not even a full grown adult. They actually get about 11 feet long. Um, this guy's probably like a good eight foot, seven foot. Uh, actually really calm and tame. I'm surprised I'm not big already. So yeah, man, this is great. This is a good step for us, love man. You. Yeah, he's comfortable. He's chilling. When he just arrived, he knows like that. Yeah, he was on, uh, really on high alert when he first came in, but uh, he's been doing a whole lot better, as you guys can see. I don't want to speak too soon, but I think we're best friends. 
Okay. So I'll let him go in there. And as he goes in, I'll show you guys that crazy high yellow. Look at that. Look at that underbelly, man. Just absolutely one of my favorite animals to work with. Very calm. That went really well, actually. I can definitely tell you the next one's not going to go well at all. So enjoy that little moment me and this one just shared without getting bit. Um, getting bit is fun for the viewers. Um, it doesn't hurt me physically anymore because I'm just like immune to the pain of it because I know it's coming. Um, but it hurts me emotionally because I don't want the animal to be freaked out or I feel like I'm trying to like eat or something, you know, be on the defense a lot. All right. So moving on. <laughs> this is our Kawaifu with Kofi Al. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Scrub Python. Um, this guy is in his water bowl, also deep in shed. Let's, uh, honey, I would definitely move out the way because I'm going to pull him out and I'm going to show you guys how big he is. He looks kind of uh, small. I don't want to lie. But Thank you. I got this guy when he's about four foot long, about. Oh. Yeah. All right, he's just like playing chicken with me over here. Now he's actually fully in shed. Look at those eyes, full on blue. <laughs> Michael look like a little kid. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is fully automatic AR-15, boy. He's got a full clip, too. I don't got much to say. <laughs> Go for y'all scrub, kawaii food scrub. Um, really, really get big. These guys get at like 16 feet long, 15 feet long. That's still a baby. Eats like a champ. Deep shed right now. Flawless specimen. No specs. No, no knickers. No nothing. Um, the problem is he kind of bangs his face on the glass sometimes. So I got to put like either a black piece of paper on top of the glass or like a sheet. He doesn't see me, but he's in a, been in a water bowl for like four or five days straight. As you guys see, he's full on milky blue eyes. Can't even see me right now. Otherwise he'd be tagging me up. So I'm going to put him away softly and gently. I don't want to get pooped on. I don't want to get bit. I'm over, I'm one and all right now. So I'm going to try to keep that same energy. His tail's halfway in there. So I want to see if I can get him to go right back in place. I and you, man. Look at that. Woo! There he goes. I told you. Ah, right back in there. That's how you work with a snake and not get bit. Woo! Nope. I spoke too soon. Ah. Hey, buddy. Good job. <laughs> so, yeah. Strike at the camera. Ice. Redirecting him. I knew he was going to bite. That's why I used my hand to touch him. Back of the stick. It's all about knowing your snakes. All right. So I didn't get bit, but uh, you almost did. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> so for now, while we're still going to be in here showing you guys the rest of the animals we have, I have to put a barrier up so we can't see. I don't want him to keep hitting his face on the glass. If he can't see us, he's not going to strike. If he can see us, now that we've been hands-on, you guys already saw him strike twice. He'll strike 15 more times in a matter of five minutes, and then his nose starts bleeding. I don't want that to happen, so that's why I put that pillowcase up there. Can't even see us. We're gonna go while my adrenaline's still up, right into the next uh, fierce uh, snakes we have here. So here is my absolute favorite snake on the planet. I keep many snakes uh, my whole life. The anaconda is my absolute number one favorite animal of all time. So these guys are actually really, really aggressive. I have a big, thick 11 foot female in the back. Um, she is full on trying to bite. Um, she's actually warm right now too. So I'll slide this bucket over. It's filled up, so it's a little heavy, but I'm gonna see if I can get that this male out. If you guys look back there, I'm not gonna really mess with the female back there because she's gonna start striking and biting. Um, so, and I don't want to get bit by that one, but I will, I'll, I'll test my luck with this smaller one. <laughs> Let's see. So this guy's, like I said, he's a little more colder, so. He's Look that so color. beautiful too. Look that color. 
I would uh, step out the way, honey, because okay. he's gonna he's gonna try. Here he goes. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, kid. Oh my God. I can kind of turn him a little bit. There we go. So yeah, just like that, he's just, uh, and again, I got enough room to work with him in this little small space where I can hold that tail and he's, you know, he's not gonna get me. That girl, look, she's ready to go. I need a little bit more space to work with her or else I'm just going to get bit or I just got to manhandle her. I don't mind manhandling anacondas because they can handle it. Um, but I will show you guys one thing I've been working on for a long time. I don't know if I can get it up, but <laughs> my whole leg from my ankle all the way up to the top of my thigh is anaconda skin. I'm not finished with it yet, but I'm still working on it. I've actually been working on this tattoo for two years. Um, I just haven't had time to sit down for many sessions these days. I've been so busy, but uh, that just goes to show you guys how much I actually love anacondas. Dedicated my whole, I'm actually gonna do my foot too. My only foot tattoo will be the anaconda's head. I'm gonna black out two of my toes and make the tongue. So my head, the head of the snake will be on my foot. It will go all the way up and the thickness of the snake will be my thigh. It goes all the way to my butt cheek. <laughs> so, yeah. This is our grand finale in this reptile room. This is your Dominican red mountain boa. She feels so good. So cool, huh? Hi. Now, if you guys look, I got her this way, but I think when someone had her before, she has been bit by a rat, so our power turned off. Power's back on. <laughs> okay, so if you guys look right here, um, she has kind of like a bumpy on her lip right there. I looked it out, I checked it out. It's just a scar, old scar. It's no swelling or anything. It's just, I think she is probably fed a live rat and then like probably bit her or something right there. You see that right there? And the little lip, it's got like a little slit right there. So I, I inspected it, checked it out, opened her mouth. And look, she's got a, oh, I see, that's something new now. Look at that, her tooth. I think that's the one of, one of her tooth that was inside her old little injury. Now, I was worried that she wouldn't eat. Um, but again, I gave her a rat and she ate just fine. Um, these snakes aren't really biters at all. I'm gonna get bit by a snake. You ready? Come here. Nah, <laughs> I wanna keep it. Well, it's good luck. So if you guys look right here, the little fat right here, that's where the little rat is at. Oh, you so sharp. Ow. <laughs> you stabbed yourself. Yeah, snake teeth are really, really sharp. Ow. Um, there's a couple of uh, Dominican red mountain boas that are just so red. And it freaks me out that I cannot find one. But when I came across this guy in a pet store looking for rat, I was actually going to buy quail. And I saw this and I had to get it. Um, I also have a calico um, Dominican Red Mountain Boa. They're like white with red spots. Absolutely crazy. And cream of the crop. Real sweet animals. They get about seven, eight foot. Um, this girl is, you know, still small. So she got some growing to do. But again, sweet temperament. They're just, you know, they got, the, again, a, going back from, I just think that I really love two-toned animals. Going from that red Mm -hmm. all the way down to like burgundy and then down to the blackness it's just beautiful man so yeah man like i said guys i know each and every individual snake's personalities i can put my hand in here grab this one put it on me not worried about getting bit hand it off to laura you know just a sweet animal when she goes back in i mean she's happy she's healthy she's eating 
and uh, she's a mentally happy snake. So I'm still on the hunt for a, a deep red, a Dominican red mountain boa. So if there's any ex breeders out there, anybody else watching this video, if anybody knows of a person or know someone that knows someone, I will pay whatever you want for an adult high red Dominican red mountain boa. All right guys, so that concludes our little reptile room over here. I have another couple small tortoises, but we'll take them out in the grass so you guys can see those guys. They're cute, little tiny little fellas. But we're gonna go outside and see some of our biggest reptiles we have on the property. Let's go. All right guys, we're out of the house and we're gonna show you guys our big, huge monitor lizards, the Varana Salvador. These are their winter houses, of course they're temporary. Um, they have different types of heaters in there, heat pads, two 250 watt lights, so 500 watts in each of these things. And I have a hound heater in the top that's constantly blowing heat down. So you guys get the point. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get him out with a pig. <laughs> he's gonna eat, he's hungry. Let's go. Oh, here he comes. He's coming fast. He's coming out fast. We're gonna walk him all the way out. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, got you. There he goes. Ooh Just gonna get a close up of that. There you go. There you go. We got the right angle. And there it goes. <laughs> now that he smashed out 1.2 pound pig, we're gonna see how he's feeling with something a little more different. I'm gonna change my tongs. And I uh, want to see if this guy can down this freaking squid. Ooh. <laughs> hey, buddy. You see this? Different smell. He's like, ooh. Boom. Yep. There he goes. I'll give him a little hand. There you go. Gone. Wow. Now, a cuttlefish. <laughs> now, this is kind of big. I don't know if he's gonna eat this, but uh, it's worth a try. That is big, man. If he eats this, he's not getting nothing else to eat. <laughs> oh, God. Your hand? Yeah. No, I don't know if he can eat this one. You want that? What's that? How about the back piece? You want the back piece? He's like, ugh, what is that smell? Hey, you want this? He's like, no. No, daddy, no. I don't want it. It's funny how they actually say no when they don't want something. I just think it's the texture that freaks him out. Or even the smell. He ate that squid with no problem. All right, we'll save that. He's <laughs> super big. <laughs> Good You're growing a God. lot. He's growing like a weed, man. He's growing a lot. Yeah. Now. Let's see if our buddy Hi. will eat. This guy's a little more shy, so we're gonna see. We might get lucky. Hey. Hey. You smell that? I know you smell it. Can I get so my tongs, shy. please? Your what? My feeding tongs. For sure. Let's see. Uh, this guy usually is a, he's a little shy. He smells it. I can see it on he's there. coming out. This guy's uh, coming out more. Let's see if we can get him to eat, man. Again, he was just shy, real shy. This is a perfect example of a thinking animal. At first he didn't know what to think because we came in his house real, real hot and sharp. But uh, he's like, hey, I want to hang out. I want to say what's up. I'm crawl right on my lap. I'm so happy. He's uh, the, the good thing about these animals is 
they were already socialized. They just needed time to settle in. Um, thanks to our boy Kevin. Um, Kevin, great freaking monitor whisperer, <laughs> animal whisperer. All my read tips you guys see in there came from Kevin. Um, these two, uh, these two monitors came from Kevin. And look at them come right on my lap. Just a gem to work with, man. Again, still getting warmed up, but look at him just walking out his habitat, walking straight on my lap. This is a, this is actually the first time he's done this since I've had him, um, and I, and I'm really happy, man, that he's uh, he's warmed up. Oh, man, what a beast of an animal, you know. I'm not gonna let him fully get out because he's the type of guy to come out. And uh, now that he's out, he's on me. I can show you guys him. Put him up on my shoulders. Show you guys a good look at this beast, man. This is my albino Hello. water monitor. This guy will share the habitat with those albino turtles and also will soon be a cage mate to the big black dragon and the coming eye. And I've learned this new chalice, you know? Look at that beast of an animal. So sweet. Just love him, man. Really? Happy he came out, right? I'm so happy. It's the first time I saw him doing that. Yeah, he came right out, and this is uh, honestly, this is nothing. I've been just give, I just gave him time to settle in. Um, this is all thanks to Kevin. He's uh spent his life's work working and understanding these animals' capabilities of understanding each other. You guys saw him when we opened the door. He ran to his house. Didn't want nothing to do with us. He's scared, and then he's like, "Oh, these are my homies." Came out nice and slow, literally climbed on our lap on camera. Freaking nuts. And you guys see relationships with our crocodile monitor, our lace monitor. Now you're seeing them with our water monitors. Just everybody from our snakes to our lizards to our dogs. We just, we, 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 we try to give everybody the best health, best wealth I can provide for their habitats. You know, I spend all my time, all my money, all my love, all my affection. I mean, I give my affection and love to Laura too, you know, <laughs> but not too far on the list are these freaking beasts, man. So yeah, guys, that's, uh, that's our lizards for now. I'm going to go put him back, give him some more options of food. I have a couple rats left, so I'll put some rats on the floor, that pig, and usually this guy eats when no one's looking, you know, so, uh, I don't cry my eyes. All right. He's good. So yeah, guys. <laughs> wow. All right, Papacito. Finito for now. I'm so happy for you. Whoop, whoop. That's cool, huh? <laughs> happy tears. You know, she's one of the people that actually is here 24-7, you know. Um, you guys see about 5% of what goes on, you know, 10%, because I just don't have time to film sometimes, guys. To be brutally honest, I'm just always doing something, you know. Every individual one of those animals needs something, whether it's just more food, more water, a cleaner habitat. Some need TLC, some need syringe feeding, some need medication. You know, some need un unconditional love and time, just quality time, you know, and she sees it. She sees what happens behind closed doors. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> I was here when when Michael picked up the guys and, and bring over here and the animal was so stressed out and that made me sad because when the when the animals change the habitat, like like the humans, stress out. So I was here for a while, maybe months. And Michael tried to hang out with the with with the albino. What is the name? Albino. Albino. And he never go out. He always is like so shy. And I'm really worried. And I talk. I'm talking with him a lot of times. Like why he was like that. And Michael always say, give him time. And now I'm just arrived yesterday again. And then I saw him walking outside and just being chilling it made me feel happy because it's like. I just want the animals feel like it's our home and just made me feel like if Michael doing great because 
I was here for months and I don't saw him going outside or eating at all. And just he coming and stay with you and look at you and just, you know, hanging out with you. And it made me feel so proud and so happy, you know, because I know the animals and I love the animals too, but I'm be here and all the process. And just I told him, I'm so proud about the work you're doing because when you're working with one dog, it's different when you're working with one reptile. And he was like a little puppy, you know, like, <laughs> my baby. <laughs> he cries like it every day. <laughs> Happy tears. We also have a little office with our baby turtles, but we're going to throw those guys in the grass so you guys can see those guys out there roaming around, eating some grass and getting some sun. Alright guys, so we're now finished here at my house. We're gonna take a quick trip over to Dan's house and see what Rep's house he has over there. It's also some of my favorite. Let's go check him out. Alright guys, last but not least, we hopped on over to Dan and Casey's house. They have a special shut up for a special person, Mr. Miyagi. He is actually our oldest reptile here on the property. He's a Chinese water dragon. They're from China. They love the water and they're dragons. <laughs> he also has two cage mates. Up here in the corner are Madagascan giant day geckos. They're from Madagascar. They're giant. They come out in the day and they're geckos. <laughs> so let's check this guy out. Just an absolute stud of a Chinese water dragon. I mean, you're not gonna get much bigger than this. This is about full grown. Got a stubby tail down there, but it's okay. 14 years old. That guy maxed out. Look at those chubby cheeks. That guy is so cute. He, of course, lived his best life here. He's happy. Um, and this is his temporary habitat too. He's gonna get a nice deep diving habitat where he can dive and swim. Probably as big as this whole cages we'll have a habitat for him we can swim in something like this inside of his new habitat but for now he's just chilling here look at his handsome guy with a purple throat got a tint of blue on his chest he's a sick animal man cute kid <laughs> we're gonna put him back he's like let me go you heathens you peasants there he goes all right guys that's about to do it. All right, guys, so you guys seen our temporary habitats, but I have a whole new spot filled with wine right now. But soon we're gonna build some crazy habitats for all these guys to go live in. Let's go check it out. What's up, guys? All right, so you guys saw my little house over there, what I got going on, but that is nothing compared to the plans we have in this place so we have a little bit of a hold up with some merchandise inside but come on i'll explain everything our reptile house and our amphibian house is going to be world class let's go all right guys now we're inside over here this is our winery where we have all the wine out but we're not a winery anymore that's going to be our reptile house but i'm going to show you guys our gym which is basically a duplicate of over here but has less than 100,000 bottles of wine. So we got our first event, so stuff's all over the place, but this is gonna be our full on gym. Um, we have more equipment coming, we're setting it up now. So this whole area will be maxed out and packed out with gym equipment, big TVs, I mean, combat equipment over there for yoga and jujitsu and all types of stuff. Um, this is gonna be our industrial kitchen. This will actually be our check-in area. So you, people that park in the parking lot will come inside this door open the bay door, they'll check in, they'll have like a little gift shop in here, you can buy your wild merch, AKA this stuff, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But let's go check out where our reptile house is gonna be, let's go. So now we're inside of our reptile and amphibian house. 
But as you guys can see, we're packed out with wine. There's literally 100,000 to 150,000 bottles of wine stacked to the ceiling, all the way back there, all the way over here, all the way over there, and even behind us. It is crazy what this place used to be. But I can guarantee you it's gonna look nothing like this. We have crazy ideas. I've traveled all around the world. I visited so many people's collections. I've taken notes to see what I want to do, what I don't want to do, and my own little twist. You guys seen our Komodo Island? You guys seen our giraffe pens being built? But you guys know I'm going to go crazy in our reptile and amphibian house. You just wait. All right, guys. So now you guys have seen everything in our house, each individual room, what's in our backyard. But we have an animal so big, it just can't even fit in the house taking it out. So we're going to drive up to the top of the hill and we're going to show you guys our big 220 pound snake. The name is Isabella. AKA Squash. <laughs> <laughs> guys I get the back piece <laughs> the thing is big man so if you guys want to look inside this bucket there's uh there's water in there I gave this girl a big old soaking um, I actually cannot work with her inside my house because when she moves one she's hot Two, look at that L the last piece of shed coming off um, big snakes usually don't shed in a full piece um, and the colonists do sometimes, big, big ones, because they're always in water, so their skin's nice and moist. But uh, this big girl also came from Nerd. She is 220 pounds. Big girl. Thick, man. Thicker than my thigh. Ugh. I'm gonna see if I can pick her up. Stop. No. Okay, come on. But that is so heavy. My back. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Oh, man, <gasps> big girl, huh? <laughs> you um, can make a squat. <laughs> I think we should name her like Squash or something. Yeah. Squash is yellow and she also squash you. <sighs> so, she's just now getting over a respiratory infection. Um, she's about 90% back there. And uh, she's, uh, she's my baby, man. Also, a big thank you to Kevin for getting her here. Um, she's been doing great, man. She is thick. She has the potential to be a 20 footer. She's about 15, 16 foot. Um, when we got her in that crate from the airport, she was, uh, the crate was 251 pounds. And then the guy said, yeah, the crate's about 30 pounds. So <laughs> she's the rest of the snake. Is her. All right, guys. So you guys seen every single one of our reptiles we have in the house. We went cage by cage. I still have more animals to get over here. So I'm gonna end this video because I gotta go back to Miami and go get the rest of the kids and bring them back and start building a freaking warehouse over here inside the winery. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I gave you guys in-depth, detailed personality, insights, who's eating, who's not, who's breeding, who's not. It's just a whole thing, man. I really appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. If you guys want a reptile video, I've been seeing you guys comment. Comment down below which one was your favorite today. Like, subscribe to all your friends. I love you guys. Peace. <laughs> Bye.